Well, hello, good evening to you. Welcome. This is Ghana Tonight. We are live from a new sub at Desawe Kanda, also live on TV3 Ghana on Facebook, DSV Channel 279, all across the world on 3news.com. I am Alfred Okanse. Tonight, we're just about some minutes uh, to go. We're learning of strongly. Uh, some reshuffle of President Kofuado's ministers and other appointees and uh, still necessary really 10 months to an election is, is this reshuffle that we're talking about necessary how much of an impact is that going to have that's a conversation that we would have here on Ghana tonight stay with us and uh, well there's some names that are being bandied around we we are not going to go with that list of names but really whether there's going to be any impact if the reshuffle should happen because this is not the first time we're hearing this but as election 2024 nears the search for running mates by flag bearers of the two main political parties intensifies here on your election command center more names are, are popping up who are these people and do they really bring anything to the table stay with us we have a conversation and also here on ghana tonight as we go on our manifesto check series as we started last night with you here on your election command center we stay in the education sector to assess some of the promises the npp made to ghanaians in the run-up to the 2020 elections one question we shall find out in some answers to where are the affordable housing units promised teachers teachers in this country were promised affordable housing units in the 2020 manifesto of the npp in the run-up to that election we're going to be finding out if the affordable housing units have been built for the teachers or not stay with us here on manifesto check on your election command center let's take a look at some of the stories that made headlines over the last 24 hours as always you can share your thoughts with us your views comments and opinions are welcome the hashtag we're using is gonna tonight on facebook and x let's get talking There was drama in Parliament today when MP for Asin Central, Kennedy Japon, was seen in an altercation with colleague MP for English Amal from Sylvester Tete. It was unclear the cause of the tension between the two legislators, but it took the intervention of Deputy Majority Leader Alexander Penyo Marking to bring peace between them. <laughs> The electricity company of Ghana has attributed a 1.9 billion cities lost in 2021 to the depreciation of the city against major trading currencies. Managing Director Samuel Dubik Mahama, who appeared before Public Accounts Committee, indicated that the company is working on reducing losses through efficient revenue collection. The electricity company of Ghana mostly buys the electricity it sells in dollars then sells in cities, then has to go back and pay in dollars. The forex losses alone for the year is, is something that we have to look at in terms of our business. Forex losses is what is culminating for over 80% of the losses that you are seeing. Mr. <music> Ghanaian women are currently having fewer children. The number of births per woman have declined by 40% in 2022 compared to 34 years ago. We focus on the women because when you carry a baby for nine months, you hardly forget that you were once pregnant. So to talk about seasonality, we used three years to give us a rough estimate. And so on that, we're able to say that in Ghana, women within the age group 15 to 49 years, before they complete their Reproductive life, we have given birth to 3.9 children, or almost four children. A former Minister of Food and Agriculture, Dr. Usa Kote Fuye, has observed the only means of empowering and increasing the income of the local farmer 
is to introduce an import restriction ban on food products. Speaking at the launch of KNUST Faculty of Agriculture 7th anniversary, the former Kwada lawmaker said Ghana has the ability to produce more than it consumes with the right investment. Our farmers are heavily disadvantaged under the current import regime. They desperately need a level playing field in order to compete effectively with their counterparts abroad. Our legislature to act as a matter of urgency to restrict these imports which are being dumped on the Ghanaian markets against the interests of our farmers. The Vice President, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, has urged ECOWAS countries and others in the Sahel region to increase funding for combating landmines, suggesting a portion to be allocated for survivors. He was speaking at the opening of a three-day ECOWAS conference in Accra on addressing humanitarian and impacts of landmines. This underscores the significant financial commitment made by both states and international organizations worldwide towards the effective implementation of the convention. The landmine monitor reported that in 2022, at least 4,710 individuals were killed or injured by landmines or explosive remnants of war in 49 states. Oh, there's more news on 3news.com. Make some time and visit 3news.com. This is Ghana Tonight. Coming up next, we ask this question tonight. We're just about 10 months, they're about, yeah, to election 2024. Is a reshuffle of President Kufado's ministers and other appointees still necessary? How much of an impact will that have, especially if, if it's going to be a manifesto uh, that's uh, so our an election strategy for that matter. In fact, there's a number of permutations uh, being put to this decision if it so comes to pass. We're picking strong signals that the ministerial reshuffle is in the offing, in earnest. But this conversation and calls for a reshuffle is not exactly a new one. Even members of the NPP have had cause to remind President Kofado on the need to make changes to his government in time past, as far back as four or five years ago. But he has often had this thing to say that, look, he knows exactly what he's doing. And we are in the dying moments of his administration, 10 months to an election, really, how much of an impact is that going to have? But let's look back and see how that has been the case over the period, especially the conversation about reshuffling, especially in Nanado Nankwe Kufado's period over the last a little over seven years now this conversation of whether or not he should have a reshuffle. And he's only replaced ministers who have either uh, been found guilty of one act of corruption or the other, or also you've we've had cases where some of them lost an election. If you recall, after 2020, those who lost the elections were replaced. So there have been instances where there have been replacements, but not a reshuffle. But looking at the timing... Is, is this really going to make an impact, especially in your eyes as a, as a voter? How much of a difference will that have for you? There's a question and a poll that is going on on, on Facebook right now and then on X at, at TV3 Ghana on Facebook and, and on X. Share your thoughts with us. But take a look at this. Let's backtrack a bit, right? This is what the president said specifically in August 2022. The issue of a reshuffling or performance of my ministers is a daily preoccupation. I'm required on a daily basis to ask myself whether a particular minister is up to the mark. He says daily. He's, he does a daily assessment of the ministers. I am the final authority, and if they are not up to the mark, I am required to act. So if they are up to the expectations, then I don't have any reason to heed to the calls for reshuffling. This was in 2022. So he says that continuously, as he does the assessment of the, the ministers and his uh, uh, appointees, on a daily basis he does so, 
And really, if there's no basis for a reshuffling, he's not going to do that. And, and over the years, this has been his position. And what, what we just read to you was in August 2022. Then, Dr. Nana, are you a free year? Um, also quoted, you've seen this. Um, and then you have Justin Frimpong, Kodi as well, General Secretary of the NPP, who just last year, during the NPP's uh, Thanksgiving service, made this statement attributed to him, that if you're a minister, a CEO, or an MMDC, and it, you have not been reshuffled, and you think you are tired, resign. Don't sabotage the party. It is time for some changes in the government, so we get some new faces to continue. We believe that if we, if we get new appointments, we will be able to retain power in the next election. This was in 2023, this statement that Justin Fripon Kodia said, that if, they, if his belief is that if they get new appointments, new faces, new persons to man certain ministries, they will be able to retain power in this election ahead of us. Well, guess what? We have just about some, some 10 months to this election. And really, how much of an impact this, this is going to have and, and also going forward, what is going to happen going forward? Well, uh, they're not alone in this. A number of persons have also been talking about this, this call for a reshuffle over the period. And, and all these persons I'm showing you are members of the NPP. I mean, beyond what others have been talking about, members of parliament, as well as some um, appointees of government all calling on President Kofado to consider a reshuffle. Well, that hasn't happened over the period. So this is it. But that, that conversation that's going on, on on Facebook and X will show you the results at least based on the opinions of some of you who have been sharing your thoughts with us uh, so far. And this is it. Based on what we have seen so far and based on at least the responses that have come through so far, a number of you have expressed very interesting thoughts. Let's go on to the telephone now. And Dr. Kwame Asante is a senior lecturer, political science department at the University of Ghana, Lagon. Dr. Asante, good evening. Thank you for joining us here on Ghana tonight. Alfred. Great. So it's good to have you. Now, this is not the first time we've read a headline of reshuffle looming. I mean, as the media will put it. And it's been the running theme for the last five hours or so, looming reshuffle, reshuffle impending. As far as I can remember, for the past four or five years, there's always been a reshuffle looming headline at one point in time or the other. That never comes to pass. So if, if this happens, how much of a difference is this going to have, especially within the time that we find ourselves in ahead of the election? Yeah, if we were to, to uh, have uh, a reshuffle, um, it's a fine idea that is coming uh, at a very late period uh, within the year. <clears throat> One would have expected the government to have, uh, you know, reshuffled a long time uh, until now. But as the saying goes, better late than never. Uh, now, whoever is coming in, they need to be able to double the effort of government uh, in order to give government some breather. Uh, so as to prepare effectively for election campaign. Uh, they have a lot ahead of them in terms of uh, the way they need to fix things uh, to win the confidence of people because people are disenchanted, people are worried, means of livelihood are affected by the day. Uh, so there is a whole lot that government needs to fix if you want to put it act together and be able to fight the campaign head on. Well, timing is of the essence in politics. So, yes, in some aspects of life, the saying of better late than never can pass, it can work. But can you say same for, for politics? Um, and, and especially when you have a crucial election ahead of you and, and everything that's happened over the period, that the, the call for a reshuffle is not new. It's at least been going on for the past four or five years. But then consideration is given to that call 10 months to an election. Can that saying of better late than never ever make a difference? Oh, difference? Um, yeah, not that much. But what you are going to have is, um, you know, a certain improvement one way or the other. But by and large, 
uh, the value is going to be the same. Uh, but if you are able to do it, um, you will be able to cut some friendships of the public and uh, you win uh, some souls. Uh, but as to whether the effect is going to be monumental to help your cause, that's another thing. But that uh, should be a learning curve for uh, politicians and would-be politicians who want to, uh, you know, have power. That, yes, one thing having power and another thing managing it and managing it so as to hang on it for a very long time. Uh, if you don't manage it well, power, it will slip through your fingers. And um, I expect the party to be able to march our forces and let uh, the, the, the reshuffle uh, comes on so as to be able to uh, last minute uh, help up in order to survive the elections. Well, w one person that the, the cause of for him to be reshuffled has been consistent over the years, even having some NPP MPs, unprecedented, coming out to ask the president to, to sack him is Ken Oforiata. Now, with the list that's going around, which we cannot independently confirm or not even make reference to, he's in, in there as well. There are some specific persons as, as well. Will the reshuffle of certain individuals make any impact as against just a reshuffle just for the sake of it? You don't just reshuffle. You reshuffle for a good cause. There are a number of reasons. Uh, or factors that are considered when you are reshuffling. You want to have a paradigm shift. Obviously, the government has hit the crossroad that uh, paradigm shift is inevitable. You are in the hands of IMF now. You need to bring people who are like-minded to be able to further the cause to satisfy the home demand and that of the demands of the IMF. So a paradigm shift is necessary, and you need players who can play ball and be able to uh, deliver the public good. That aside, you need also people who will come in and inject fresh energies into the system. If you look at the system now, they are gasping for breath. Uh, so you need people who are not tired, fresh uh, hands coming and come and augment what already exists. And above all, you need very competent people who you are going to place at certain positions so that they can turn your fortunes around uh, in no time. So that is a daunting tax. But as the saying goes on, uh, we are saying that there is always a way out. If you want to apply yourself to the situation, you always have a certain answer. But as to whether the effect would be something that you can cash on uh, in the campaign, in the election ahead of us, uh, it rests in the bosom of voters and how you organize yourself and then how you manage your resources in addition to your manifesto and messages that you turn out to win the hearts and minds of people. But the Sasa, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us here on Ghana tonight Thank with your you. thoughts on this matter. This position that you take is actually reflected in the conversations going on on social media. After we put this uh, poll question there and take a look at this. You, you are always an integral part of this show and your views and your thoughts are, are very much a part of this. And also what we have, we have been talking about over the period. A number of you have been sharing your thoughts with us. Um, your, your thoughts on this uh, this particular decision take a look at this or the news the, the clear suspicion has been going around question was put that is it necessary for president Kofado to reshuffle his ministers and other appointees now right a number of you say yes 32 percent 30 percent of you say no in fact for the first time in a long while our poll had the persons who are indifferent you say you don't care where what really happens 37 percent of the 900 of you who voted within just that short period will put this poll say really you don't care you know but but as to whether that's going to influence your votes going forward is also uh, another conversation and that's what dr sasanti has been talking about supposing we also ask this question supposing you have the power to reshuffle president kufado's ministers which appointees will you want replaced or reshuffled and why this is what some of you had to say 
about this, this question that we put out. And uh, you also contributed to the conversation. So we're going to show that to you shortly as we go on. And we also put up this, this poll about the necessity or otherwise of a, a reshuffle at this time. And these are the thoughts that some of you shared um, as we go on. And uh, we, as we go on, we'll definitely be showing you the, the thoughts that some of you shared about some of the ministers and appointees you want to reshuffle. This is your election command center. We're very interactive on, on Ghana tonight. So as always, check out our Facebook page, TV3 Ghana, and let's get talking. And also on X at TV3 Ghana. Coming up next year on Ghana tonight, on our new series, uh, the segment on this show tonight, we'll talk about Manifesto Check. We started this journey yesterday. Manifesto Check is checking the manifestos of the party in power and the, and the manifestos yet to be launched by both political parties, MPP and NDC, and the other political parties as well. Now, we've been focusing our lenses on the education sector to assess some of the promises the MPP made to Ghanaians in the run-up to the 2020 elections. One question we shall find answers to shortly is where are the affordable housing units promised teachers? That question. And we'll find out where in the MPP manifesto that promise was made to teachers that affordable housing will be built for teachers. And a number of you have been asking why we are focusing on just the NPP manifesto. And for good reason. They are the government in power. They are the party in power. And it is the 2020 manifesto that they used to win the election that renewed their mandate. So obviously they have the spending power. And so if we are seeking accountability, we need to look there. Until such a time when the NDC launches its manifesto as well, we are going to look at the possibility, the feasibility, and the possibility of some of the manifesto promises in NDC's manifesto if they do launch it going forward, and the MPP's manifesto and the other political parties. But this is Manifesto Check. Welcome. Yesterday, we started this journey on the education sector, the manifesto promises of the NPP. We had a lecture on who talked about the uh, book and research allowance and then the developments in there. Today, on manifesto check, we're staying in the education sector because there were a lot more promises made that we need to check. As always, Dennis Barberi, my colleague, is with me in studio. Dennis. What are we talking about in the, in the education sector and the MPP manifesto this time? So we are essentially continuing from where we left off yesterday, looking at some of the promises that were made um, in the 2016 manifesto. I explained yesterday that the 2020 manifesto was just a continuation of what was put before, uh, to Ghanaians in 2016. Mm. So that's why when you pick the manifesto for 2020, you see that for each promise, they try to outline what they had done that's right. and what more needs to be done. Mm -hmm. So we looked at book and research allowance yesterday. We had a discussion on that. Today we are looking at a promise that was made to teachers. And that was to the effect that they were going to be given some affordable housing units. The specific promise was that collaborate with NATS, NAGRAT, and others to facilitate an affordable housing scheme for teachers. Mm. That was the promise made. Collaborate with NAT. Collaborate with NAT, National NAGRAT, of and teachers. others to facilitate an affordable housing scheme for teachers. I see. The key stakeholders in here, NAT, NAGRAT, and others. I see. But so in what form was that collaboration going to take? Well, so by way of what they said they had done so far, mm -hmm. this was as of 2020 when this manifesto was unveiled, that an agreement had been reached between UNOPS and the government to construct 100,000 units for teachers and other education prof professionals. Now, UNOPS 
simply is a UN agency, stands mm. for United Nations Office for Project Services. Right. This is an agency which is dedicated to the implementation of infrastructure and procurement for um, the UN and governments. Perfect. So this promise was to the effect that an agreement had already been reached with this particular agency of the UN and that it was to the effect that they were going to construct some 100,000 housing units for teachers and mm. other education professionals. So that was a promise made then. Let's look at the next one before we now take them one after the other, like we always do. Good. We touched on this briefly, but we were not able to engage the stakeholders. Mm. Hopefully we do that today. Integrate school sports as part of school activities. Now what was done was that free PE kits are being provided to students under the free senior high school. So if I'm saying it like in, saying it now, we're being provided okay. it was in the process of there was the other promise of developing an online education platform mm -hmm. to host, stream, and share short videos of mini lectures around the country. And in that regard, what they had done by 2020 was to develop an e-learning platform, and that was to include, um, which was to be called www.icampus.com gh.com and that was to include all senior high school one to three core subjects at the time the website was live i see we'll check that pretty so we're going to check it out yes, we'll check that, we'll check that pretty shortly. but right. if we go back mm. to this particular promise the housing promise the housing promise what did we find in there we have done our checks to see if anything has been done since this promise was made one thing we found out was that Indeed, there was a contract signed between, not a contract per se, but a memorandum of agreement. MOU, huh? yes. Between the government of Ghana mm -hmm. and the UN OPS. That happened. That happened. Okay. However, right. the details of that particular contract or agreement, as we have seen it, do not seem to suggest that this was purposely for providing affordable housing. For teachers. for teachers, as yes. has been suggested in the manifesto. And if you can see this, this is dated September 26, 2018. Mm. This is two years before the manifesto was made. Ghana Science Landmark Affordable Housing Initiative. And if you read the details, the United Nations Office for Project Services and the government of Ghana have signed an MOU for 1,000 Units affordable home. Right? Sorry, hundred thousand through a social impact investment initiative. Now the MOU is a major milestone in the UN OPS commitment to fostering innovative financing for sustainable development goals. I see. And will help the government of Ghana open access to sustainable, affordable, and environmentally sound housing for its citizens. Now, there's a specific quote from the executive director of the UN OPS then. And this is the quote. That there is great potential here to improve access to mm -hmm. high quality, sustainable and resilient housing for thousands of people. Mm. At the same time, this project will work to boost livelihoods and the local economy. Interesting. When you look at the object of this MOU, it was not specific to providing housing for so, teachers. teachers. So it was a singular decision taking that, yes, there's an MOU that's been yes, signed. Yes, signed. But then again, the, the people who are going to benefit from this 100,000 units mm -hmm. will be teachers. That's what that's, well, that's, so that's that the decision that, that, was, that was what was transported into the manifesto. manifesto. To make it seem as though this was signed purposely for, for the teachers. provision of affordable housing for teachers and other professionals in that space. Interesting. Very, very instructive um, deduction that um, Again, you, you make then. It didn't end there. In 2022, the president attending a program that was organized by NATS made some comments um, to the effect that the government actually was in the process of fulfilling this promise. This was in 2022? That was in 2022. We have that video, right? Yes, we have the video. Oh, let, so let's take a look at it. Let's let, let's, hear exactly let's. what the president said 
in that regard. 60 years ago, being a teacher, even a pupil teacher, was a respectable and fulfilling job. And a teacher could build a decent house through his or her salary alone. Unfortunately, we cannot imagine such a scenario for today's newly qualified teachers, or even teachers who are near retirement. This is not good enough. And that is why my government remains committed to the development of affordable housing for teachers all across the nation. The current initiative will involve the provision of housing for both mortgage and rental. I'm fully aware that one talent challenge facing teacher ownership of homes beyond finance is their inability to purchase homes where they intend to retire. Through a subsidized loan program, teachers will be provided an opportunity to own homes, houses, in desired locations in various parts of the country. We believe that teaching should not be seen as a stopgap measure or a job of last resort, but as a viable choice to enter a well-respected profession with positive long-term career prospects and good benefits. Well, there you have it. I mean, it's pretty clear. So, 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 so yes, that's the president to talking about. That, this was in 2022. Provide. Yes, 2022. And in yeah. fact, an extended version of this, would you hear the president say that in two years' time. Which so is 2024. 2024. But of course, like we always do, somebody has been named here as a collaborator. Nat is there, Nagrat is there. Maybe we want to hear from them. Yeah, yeah. If they have I the think... houses or they've even been engaged on this particular policy. Absolutely. This is Nagrat and Nat. Yes. They were named in there as yes, Nagrat, Nat, and or Addis. Their, their members were going to be beneficiaries of this 100,000 units. Precisely. Which was, was going to be completed in two years. From 2022 to now 2024, this should have been completed at least. Oh, at least. Or we should have seen some Something units. Something ongoing. Okay. Something. I think we have into Carbone on, on, on Zoom. Good stuff. Enjo Kabonu is president of the National Association of Graduate Teachers, NAGRAT. He's joining us on Zoom for a quick conversation on this matter. Mr. Kabonu, good evening. Thank you very much for joining us here on Ghana tonight. Now, you've been watching my colleague, uh, Dennis, run through the promise made to you in 2020. Uh, the manifesto of the NPP about some affordable housing units, 100,000 of them, that your members, together with NAT, Ghana National Association of Teachers, would benefit what is the status of that promise now? Have, have the affordable housing units been built or are they being built, as you do know? Uh, where I sit, I am not informed that any of the affordable houses is being built and I am not informed that any of them is ready. So that is the information I have as far as the affordable houses are concerned. I see, but this promise was made, at least captured in the 2020 manifesto of the NPP. The president spoke about it in 2022, that in the next two years, which was going to be 2024, this year we are in, the affordable housing units, 100,000 of them, for your members, would have been completed. Has there been any update between then and now? Unfortunately, to the run-up of every election, such promises are made and governments come to power and we realize that they have the challenge to keep those promises uh, that they have made. Uh, housing is an issue not only for teachers but all public sector workers. The issue is that Governments promise affordable housing, and even when the houses are built, the price of the houses go beyond the, the pockets of the Ghanaian public servants of which teachers belong. You know, there, there's always this saying that the teacher's reward is in heaven and not on earth. So, Mr. Kabano, when promises of this nature are made to you, 
to, to court the support of your members? Because you have a large teacher population uh, in this country who obviously have a say in voting, and you are instrumental, Nagrat, Nat, CCT, and the others. So if these promises are made to you and, and are not fulfilled, at least as we speak now, how do your members feel? We feel very disappointed. We feel very left behind. And then we also feel that the politicians don't take us seriously. That is why this year we support the principle that on the platform promises, on the stage promises of politicians will not be kindly uh, taken by us. My suggestion, personal suggestion is that any promise made by any politician should be reflected in the manifesto of their party and the manifesto should explain how they intend to find solution uh, to problems. The manifesto should contain the promises and the presidential candidate should speak to the manifesto promises, not on the stage, on the stage and on the spur of the moment, they make very high falutin promises that uh, do not see the light of day. Let me, so let me establish this. As we speak today, now, you don't know of any affordable housing unit being built f uh, for teachers, as promised. The none that I know that is being uh, has been constructed for teachers. But well, this government has what some ten months? I mean, President Kufuor's administration has ten months to an election, or as it were, have their mandate come to an end. Do you or and your members have the faith and the hope that this promise will be? fulfilled to you this hundred thousand housing units that was promised to you four years ago i don't believe that by the time we have elections affordable houses will be available for teachers i don't believe that well no, i'm gonna leave you now but one of the reasons why we're doing this but the major reason why we're having this conversation with you at a time like this is to ensure that there's some level of accountability going forward, that that strategy of just telling the Ghanaian people, like you, the teachers, what they want to hear, because housing is a big deal, not for just teachers, but for you, all of us, uh, just so they can get them to vote for these persons. At least that level of accountability is brought to bear so that we remind the politician what they said and check what they said they were going to do, what they have done, and what they haven't done as well, at least as a way of we as a media also bringing another layer of accountability to this democracy that we are practicing. Zagabono. But I am, I am very happy to hear that, that this time we have to subject politicians into high scrutiny and then they don't just come and make statements and when they come to government, they, we realize that they run away from them. I appreciate your time and I want to thank you as well for staying up to join us here on Ghana tonight. And Joe Kabonu is president of the National Association of Graduate Teachers, Nagrat, joining us. So, Dennis, we have some confirmation now. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yes from yes. Nagrat, one of the collaborators, well, that they don't know of any housing unit being built anywhere. Maybe it's still in the offing? Ten months. We have a few more months to go. 100,000 units in ten months. I'm just saying. It's, it's, it is possible. Maybe it is possible. I don't know. But, Alfred, let's, let's, let's look at the next one. Very quickly, okay. The promise to integrate school sports as part of school activities, and that that provided free PE kits um, to students under the free senior high school program. We do know that some contracts were awarded for the provision of these kits, uh, but along the line, there were some issues with the suppliers of it. I understand we have the suppliers on the on Zoom. <laughs> yes, indeed, um, you're right about this. And what we are learning is that the other. Another group of suppliers were also engaged, but this is another suppliers group that we understand have joined us. And um, Dennis, you're right about this. Uh, Emmanuel Aivo 
a spokesperson of the National Association of Institutional Suppliers. Now, we want to understand what they really do and how they fit into the scheme of things we're talking about. Ms. Ivo, good evening. Thank you very much for joining us here on Ghana tonight. First of all, let's establish this. Who, who are you, the National Association of Institutional Suppliers? What do you do? Uh, um, a group of um, business men and women who actually supply for public secondary schools. So we supply school uniform, house dress, school cloth, stationery, PE kits for the various public secondary schools. I see. And have you been engaged by government under this free senior high school program? We've been supplying even before the inception of free SHS. So under the free SHS policy, it was streamlined. Now it is the various headmasters who award the contract so they become intermediary between us, the suppliers, and the government. So uh, this has been there before the inception of free SHS. I see. And then for, for how long have you b been s supplying uniforms and PE kits under this free senior high school program? Yes. So under the free SHS, um, 2017, the government uh, supply PE kits and stationery. So um, that lot was taken away from individual suppliers across the country, and it's been awarded at the ministry level. For whatever reason, we can know, we cannot tell. So um, left with the school uniforms and house dress and school clothes. So that is what currently we are doing. I see, and you supply this under the free senior high school program. As you have been engaged by the ministry. And how many months are you old? Let's understand this. All from uh, 2021, 2022 academic year, then 2022, 2023 academic year. So precisely the students who are in the final year as we speak, governments have, uh, have a lot of areas to pay for us. And those who are in the second year as we speak, most of them are wearing school uniform. Government hasn't really paid for. I see. And so what is the Ministry of Education telling you um, about when you're going to be paid this money? Because you have sold the uniforms, the students are wearing it in the school, and you're saying they're wearing uniforms they haven't paid for. Well, this is the, the government owes you, right? Not, not the students. So any, any idea when you're going to be paid? That is uh, the saddest aspect of it. The ministry do not have any formal um, payment plan with us. Usually what they do is at any point in time, a supplier sends um, the document to free SHS secretariat. We are grouped according to batches. So batch one, batch two, to whatever batch that the ministry didn't fit. But um, as we speak, we, we don't even know the batch they are even up to at the moment because um they what they are doing they are doing what we call selective payments that is since the time we began to um uh, actually ask the government to pay so now as we speak we don't have any formal arrangement with the ministry as to where when they will pay us and the last time we had a meeting with the Minister of Education, that is Honorable Educhum, he, he told us that uh, we can just go ahead and demonstrate because uh, it's our constitutional right. And he didn't even give us any clear line of uh, when we'll be paid. You know what? Uh, we're going to continue knocking on the doors of the Education Ministry for some answers on this matter. Uh, because what you have just said directly places some a burden of response from them. But... So what's going to be your next line of action now that you're owed this number of years and there's no clear indication of when you're going to be paid? Actually organizing a press conference this coming um, Wednesday, next, come, next week Wednesday, sorry, and to officially announce our picketing date at the Ministry of Education. So we'll be picketing. And um, again, we will be involving other stakeholders. We have in mind reaching to um, His Excellency uh, Dr. Uh, Baumia to send him a petition, as well as His Excellency uh, John Ramani Mama. We'll be sending him petition as well. Then if 
if it comes to the, the worst end scenario, we'll be writing to the IMF country director to state our our plight and our grievances to him as well, to him as well. But for the interim, we will be picketing. Yes. So um, coming next week, Wednesday, officially, all media will be invited and we will communicate our picketing date. Thank you. Thank you very much. Emmanuel Ivo is executive member of the National Association of Institutional Suppliers. So we have some detail of, yes. of what's happening. Uh, and, if I were to mark, I think I'll give that a tick because okay. he confirmed that even before this manifesto, they were doing it. So okay. it only goes to confirm the assessment that before this, they were it being provided. Yes, and it still admits that even after they were, even the actual challenges, be that at me, I mean, it's only fair to give them the credit where it's due. But for the first one, we can only put a question mark. And that question mark would mean, where are the housing units for the teachers? Where are the housing? Maybe there are somewhere that we don't know. Yes, but so even if Nagrat and Nat, if Nagrat and Nat That's, don't know mm -hmm. where, where the housing, housing units are, are, who are we? Maybe we should go and look for the UN housing units, the 2018 MOU yeah. for that contract. Absolutely. And who they've been given to and all that. But Alfred, before I go... I'm hearing some stuff. Anyway. There's yes. something about... Um, the online portal I was telling online you about. Online portal, yes, yes. You, you told me about it. So, um, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if, if, if viewers at home can also just input this into your browser. www.icampusgh.com. Yes. And the interesting thing is that as of yesterday when I was doing my checks, I was told that new data was being loaded. All right. And today, when I made the checks again, this is the interface you see. So this is a live page. It requires somebody to input um, a BC index number. And I'm guessing this was designed with BEC candidates in mind. in mind. Because if I don't have a BEC, I don't know how I'm going to log on to this platform. But of course, it is live. And okay. that is what the promise was about. And on this platform, we're supposed to be loaded lectures, short lectures for pupils in their homes and offices, as the promise um, clearly stated here. Okay. Think, yeah. So that's Let's about see. it for today. But this, this was specific for SHS... Core, yes, subjects. core subjects. But the interface talks about BEC. BEC. Okay. Index numbers. So, All of right. course, after BEC, it's like preparing you ahead of the time. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, thank you, Dennis. Appreciate it. Um, this journey we're on is just for the Ghanaian people. At least um, in the end, this democracy, as I always say, must make sense somehow. Certainly. Dennis Barberi Wadam um, is with me here on Ghana Tonight for the manifesto check here on your election command center. We're going to do this with you every step of the way for you watching us. So always let your voice be heard. We're very interactive here on Ghana Tonight. Coming up next, as your election, Command Center Election 2024 nears, the, the search and conversations about persons for running mate or even persons who have to be considered for political office um, is coming up again, over and over again. At least we have the dates for some of the announcements, but the people and their considerations and the qualities. We'll be back shortly after this quick break. Stay with us. Welcome back. This is Ghana Tonight. Well, as election 2024 nears, uh, the search for running mates or even the persons to occupy political or public leadership um, by both political parties intensifies. More names keep popping up as likely candidates or considerations. Who are these people and uh, what do they really bring to the table? Well, the conversation as to the qualities that people must have um, to occupy political leadership, even at the presidential or vice presidential level, is one that has dominated the minds of many because of the situation that we're faced with now this continuous questioning about whether the political class can be trusted 
because of the broken promises over the period. So there's an issue of trust, confidence, the credibility of the people who are putting themselves up for political leadership. Well, guess what? Toby Afeda, the 14th, um, his name has come up in a number of circles, but we had a statement earlier today from the Asogli state. Take a look at this. Um, this is a statement attributed to the Asogli state council that NDC running mate heats up and Toby Afeda is ready to abdicate. So that is it's a headline of a story that they are responding to. They say the attention of the office of the Abu Mafia, Toby Afeda the 14th, has been drawn to news items published by the Daily Graphic and other major news outlets under the caption NDC running mate heats up um, and then Nano Pokwajiman leads back. Toby Afeda's name pops up. And also another headline that read Toby Afeda is ready to abdicate his tool to become Mohammed's running mate, unquote. Now, the office of the Agbogbo Mefia would like to state the following. One, the Agbogbo Mefia remains very passionate about the development of Ghana. Toby did not work for a day in the U.S. before returning to Ghana after completing his studies at Yale, owns no properties abroad, and considers his fortunes to be inextricably linked to those of the country. The, these explain Togbe's willingness to share his knowledge and expertise with government to further the course of development. Two, many people and groups have approached Togbe over the years to leave chieftaincy and get more actively involved in the political leadership of the country. Togbe's response has always been that there are many avenues available to chiefs and queens in the country to legally contribute their quota to national development. It continues that a group of people who identify themselves as Change Makers Forum were the latest to approach Togbe to consider joining President Mahama as his running mate for 2024 presidential election. Togbe responded that as a patriotic citizen, he would not reject any opportunity to serve the country, but the choice of a running mate is the prerogative of the flag bearer who already knows him very well. So it continues that, in essence, uh, so that the, the caption comes with the, the being ready to serve, for that matter. And uh, consider it is a, a great honor that a group of well-informed professionals called on him to express their trust in him and thus their desire for him to be the next vice president of Ghana. But who is Toby Afede? The, the, the 14th, right? And at least just for the uninitiated, we do know. Uh, a lot that he has done um, in his private life and then also the achievements that he has under his sleeve in terms of the credibility that he even brings to the conversation uh, about governance in this country for that matter and some of the considerations especially for the kind of leader we need at a time like this. Take a look at this at least just a brief profile about Toby Akfede the 14th. An investment banker with more than 20 years' experience, he is executive chair of World Trade Center Accra, founder of SES Finance Group Limited, comprising of Strategic African Securities, a stock brokerage and corporate finance advisory firm, and SES Investment Management Limited, an asset management firm. Uh, Tobe also founded Strategic Initiatives Limited, SIL, a portfolio and private equity investment firm, and is the co-founder of Data Bank Financial Services, Sonona Sogli Power Ghana Limited, Africa World Airlines, Cloud Ghana Limited, and Lighting and Construction Africa Company Limited. Tobe served on the board of the Central Bank of Ghana from 2003 to 2013 and was a member of the President's Economic Advisory Council from 2009 to 2012. Many things that he's done. Also a traditional ruler, as we do know, he's the uh, Mafia of the Asogli State in Ghana. He's the former president of the Volta Regional House of Chiefs and a member of the Standing Committee of the Ghana National House of Chiefs. And many, many, many more. And the number of awards that he's won, quite a lot of them. And we, we, we have them as we, if you go on our Facebook page, you find it there. Uh, directorships, uh, roles, Accra House of Folk Sport and Club, Africa Fertilizer and Agribusiness Partnership, a partnership of Africa Development Organizations, Africa World Airlines, co-chair, Alouest, Ghana Limited, and then many, many, many more. Um, you have Ensign College uh, of Public Health, National Investment Bank at a, at a point, at a point, and then also Sanana Sogli, as we see there, many. So if you, 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 you've heard him talk about NIB very passionately because of how much of an impact that he, he's had over the period there. Well, and a number of you shared your thoughts with us about the question that we asked. 
about who, you, if you had the power to reshuffle, you would reshuffle. Take, take a look at this. And these are the comments that came through. And we're going to end with this. Yeah. This is what we had from you, our viewers, on, on this and all the issues that came up earlier. A number of you shared your thoughts with us on Facebook. That's TV3 Ghana on Facebook. This one here says, and I'm going to read that to you, um, Bright, Back, Bright, Bright Back Door. He actually tweeted at us at TV3 Ghana says, we have 10 months of elections. <laughs> they, they should complete their terms in their various offices so that we can easily quantify their failures. Uh, uh, I will reshuffle the president to the position of vice and the vice to the president of presidency so that the vice president can remove the nuisance taxes before we vote them out, you say, Mr. P. Um, the Minister of Interior, you say, because he's... Okay. All right, it goes on and on. Uh, I can't kindly read those words. Uh, that's like spraying a car with a bad engine. No amount of reshuffles can unmake the damage that has been done. It goes... Mm, well... You have quite a lot of you. Lawrence Ofori also shares his thoughts with us. What effect will the reshuffle have with just 10 months for his administration to end, you say? Well, guess what? Because we are not new to this news of impending reshuffle, reshuffle looming, until it comes, we'll all just wait. But on behalf of the rest of the team, thank you very much for staying with us here on Ghana tonight. Join us same time tomorrow. To have a good night. I'm Alfred Kansi. Ghana tonight.